Hi friends, it's time for another virus vacation story. And today's story is How I Became a Pirate by Melinda Long and David Shannon. And my dog Bonnie was actually named after a pirate. Because if you see her face, it looks like she's wearing a pirate patch. She's not cooperating right now. <laughs> Maybe later. How I Became a Pirate, written by Melinda Long and illustrated by David Shannon. Pirates have green teeth when they have any teeth at all. I know about pirates because one day when I was at the beach building a sandcastle and minding my own business, a pirate ship sailed into view. I knew what it was because its flag had a skull and crossbones on it and because I could hear the pirates singing, hey ho, blow the man down, they were a little off key. I tried to tell dad, but he was busy setting up the beach umbrella. I tried to tell mom, but she was busy slathering my baby sister with sunblock. So I went back to my sandcastle, but I kept an eye on the pirates. By then, they were rowing to shore. When they landed, the head pirate climbed out of the boat and yelled, Ahoy there, matey! Be this the Spanish main? No, I said. This is North Beach. Shivery timbers, the pirate said. We must have taken a wrong turn at Bora Bora. He walked around my sand castle. He looked at the moat, then he yelled back to his crew. He's a digger he is, and a good one to boot. A good one to boot, the others agreed. What be your name, matey, the head pirate asked. Jeremy Jacobs, sir, I told him. Well, Jeremy Jacob, he said, you're looking at Braid Beard and his crew. We've been needing a digger like yourself. We've a chest of treasure to bury. Aye, treasure, the others shouted. You're coming with us, Braidbeard told me. I didn't think Mom and Dad would mind, as long as I got back in time for soccer practice the next day. That's how I became a pirate. As soon as we were on board, Braidbeard showed me the chest of gold and jewels. Got to find a safe place for this here treasure. It's high time we were off, he announced. We're off, we all shouted, and then we set sail. There was plenty to do aboard. The pirates taught me to sing sea chanties, the louder the better, and to say real pirate stuff like landlubber and scurvy dog. By dinner time, I could speak pirate perfectly. I also learned pirate manners. Braidbeard pounded his fist on the table and yelled, down the hatch, me laddies. Down the hatch, we all shouted. Braidbeard gulped his food and said, Hand over the meat. The meat, we all roared. Nobody told us to finish our spinach. There wasn't any. Or to chew up our carrots. They weren't allowed on board. We talked with our mouths full. And nobody said please or thank you. After dinner, I tried to teach the pirates to play soccer. <coughs> Braidbeard kicked the ball and yelled, Arr, sucker! Arr, sucker! The crew yelled. Then everybody dove for the ball all at once, and it rolled right af off the deck. After it, me hearties! Braidbeard commanded. After it? We all whispered. We fought over who would go get the ball, but it didn't matter anyway, because a shark came along and swallowed it in one gulp. So much for soccer. By now it was past my bedtime. Oh, pirate dog. <laughs> Hello, pirate dog. But nobody tells pirates to go to bed, to take a bath, or to brush their teeth. Maybe that's why their teeth are green. Pirates sleep with one eye open, just in case. And they don't change into pajamas, unless they want to. P 
pirates don't do anything they don't want to, except for maybe swapping the decks. I wanted to be a pirate forever. <coughs> Excuse me. But then I found out what else they don't do. When I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard to tuck me in and read me a story. Tuck you in, he bellowed. Pirates don't tuck. No tucking, the crew cried. And the only thing they had to read was a map. Don't you have any books? I asked. Braidbeard looked confused. Books? I didn't even bother to ask about a good night kiss. It wasn't easy to fall asleep without a story, but I was finally dozing off when a storm broke. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. I tried to hide under the covers as waves slammed up against the ship, but I kept falling out of my hammock. I couldn't find anyone in the cabin. They were all on deck. Lower the sails, Braidbeard shouted. Batten down the hatches. Everybody ran around yelling and lowering and battening. Nobody had time to sit close and tell me it would be over soon. Nobody even noticed me. I decided that I didn't want to be a pirate after all. Just then, flash, crash, crack. Lightning hit the mast and split it right down the middle. What do we do now? yelled one of the pirates. We'll have to turn back, called another. But the treasure, hollowed Braidbeard. Where will we bury the treasure? I stepped forward. Maybe I can help, I shouted over the wind. I think I know the perfect digging spot. When the storm was over, we rowed back to shore and buried the chest. We drew a map so we could find the treasure again. But I don't think I'll need it. This is Jeremy Jacobs' backyard. After that, the pirates repaired the ship and got ready to sail. Before they left, Braidbeard handed me a flag and said, You make a fine pirate, Jeremy Jacob. Guard that treasure well. We'll be back to get it soon enough. Soon enough, the crew repeated. And if you ever need us, Braidbeard added, just run the Jolly Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, the other shouted. And maybe I will, but not today. I have soccer practice. And that's the end. Now you can see her pirate patch. Bonnie, the pirate.